let's all right let's let folks come in and let me see if i can get the live stream working live at five yep it's working great all right folks on twitter and and those of you that are coming into the zoom give us just a minute as we get everybody up here and tweet get the retweets and all of our fun stuff that we do logistically in the background um okay so hello everyone my name is mike venuto i am the co-founder of Toroso Investments and a chief hurt cat herder that moves all of this along. Um, excited about today's show because uh, we're going to be talking about something from the world of DeFi that we've been uh, jumping into pretty deep to learn more about. I know some of you heard about our ETF nerd collection and the things that we were doing there and the concepts that we're trying to break down. So we brought an NFT specialist on who comes from a traditional finance background and is coming here with us. You know, we usually like to have a drinking word. We're going to do DeFi today um, uh, and uh, should be a lot of fun. If you've got questions or want to be promoted up as a panelist, just put them there in the chat and we'll get you up here. And we're going to put in the chat the backgrounds if you want to come join us at the ETF Think Tank Bar. I think that's all the logistics. So then I'm going to hand it over to our, our birthday girl, Cynthia Murphy, to introduce mm -hmm. herself. Hey guys, I am Cynthia Murphy. I'm the head of research for the tank. Um, and um, I don't herd cats. I, I just linger around waiting to be herded, I guess. So I'm excited to be here today. Uh, as you know, we've, we've been playing around with the NFTs. Uh, we have yet to get a call from somebody who got super lucky and got all our rarity traits in one. So if you are one of those people, let us know. We're dying to hear people who got the rare NFT. Um, so just happy to be here. Thanks for joining us, everybody. All right, Professor. So everybody, that's me. That's my NFT. No, <laughs> I, not really, but I, it is one I own. So I'm, I'm happy to do that. So the ETF professor, co-PM of the blockchain ETF BLOK, and also lead ETF strategist for the ETF think tank. Hey, Warren Kaplan, glad you're joining us. Uh, have a drink too. So that's it. Uh, David, uh, on to you, man. Thanks so much. Uh, David Chikansky, your portfolio manager with the Toroso crew, focusing on the SoFi gig economy ETF and the Amplify Inflation Fighters IWIN ETF. Um, I think the NFT was based off of a picture from you in the 80s, White Scott, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank um, you. And now I'll pass it on to our guest, Sergio, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Thank you for being with us today, and we're looking forward to the show. Sure, thank you so much for the invite. Um, I'm Sergio Silva. I'm on Twitter at Sergito Sergito. I am technically the Latam sales lead for Fireblocks. We're the largest digital asset custodian, uh, but I'm also the re uh, resident NFT degen and um, I pretty much collect JPEGs on my free time. <laughs> I love it, just, I love that it. That just <laughs> sounds weird, right? <laughs> it is weird, it is totally weird. It, it should be weird. <laughs> So, so we're going to get deep into this today because uh, this is really something that, that I've gotten excited about. Actually, I see uh, my nephew, Neil, is on watching today. He's the one who first got me to look at NFTs, and we went through a lot of hell learning minting and stuff. So I decided to take on the project of building one uh, to do for free, which I'm going to show you folks. You know, Cynthia has written a good bit about it, uh, but I want to share with you our blockchain page on the ETF think tank where you can come in and mint your own nerd. And we've got the stories about what we went through to do with it. And all of Weisskopf's videos with uh, sailor and, and uh, Levitt and various different blockchain folks. I bring all this up first because I've told the story before in the past that uh, I started looking at blockchain because I saw it as a threat to ETFs, right? Um, that the infrastructure that, is behind every ETF is basically call it 200 K of paying custodians, transfer agents, um, exchanges, various different regulatory places, distributors, all these places that all they really do is verify that what we say is in the ETF is in there and who owns the ETF owns the ETF. All of that sounds like blockchain to me. And all of that sounds like 200 K that could disappear. Um, <laughs> so, so 
you know, five, six years ago, that's how I started looking at this world. Now, I've also been, as you guys have heard a couple of times, pretty negative on this idea of Ethereum. I, you know, I understand the Bitcoin concept. I've been a big believer in it. I will say NFTs have changed my opinion on Ethereum because going through the process of using it, I actually can see the utility. Now, I don't know how you value it. Um, that part, I, I'm not even going to pretend to know. And uh, But the utility aspect of it is super interesting. Uh, we had a show yesterday with Wisdom Tree uh, where we talked about the narrative of Bitcoin being digital gold and the idea of Ethereum being more like digital oil. Uh, and it's funny that they use the term gas fee there. So it all kind of comes together, but it's almost like feeding the ability to use the space. One thing that I found really interesting when we tried to do this and was that the creation of all these NFTs where there's a thousand that are available or well, now there's 920. So we've had people actually come in and mint these. It's really a process of building the layers, which is very similar to me of building an index or a portfolio and then having the computer put it together and track the uniqueness of it. So again, it makes me feel even stronger that the, the concepts behind blockchain and what they can do to have traditional finance get in the, uh, be disintermediated by DeFinance. Might as well give you a warning that we're going there, DeFi. <laughs> um, so I'm just throwing that all out there. I encourage everybody to click here and read the, the blog entries that, that um, Cynthia has been writing about this um, and see all the videos that we're doing here in the blockchain space. And if you've never minted an NFT, ours are free. You do have to pay the gas fees. Um, there's an irony. It's really hard to do something for free in the blockchain space. The NFT world is really designed to make money. So us doing it for free, I think it surprised OpenSea that anybody would even want to do this. Um, so uh, I encourage everybody to learn. Now, that's all us. I want to now go to, uh, we'll, we'll have questions and answers. We'll come back to this. I want to go to Fireblocks now and just have uh, Sergio, you know, first question. Tell us a little more about Fireblocks and then tell us what we did wrong with our ETF nerds. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So Fireblocks, well, people think of us as a custodian, where in reality, we are a digital asset platform that enables um, all kinds of institutions. So we only service institutional clients, but everything from hedge funds to um, traditional custodians, banks, insurance companies, all kinds of players, NFT marketplaces, um, to stand up their wallet infrastructure in a secure way. And so uh, we have over a thousand institutional clients all around the world. Uh, we've transferred over $2.6 trillion of digital assets in the three years that the platform's been around. And we pretty much are, have become kind of like a legacy piece of the crypto infrastructure. Um, and we're very, very happy that, you know, we continue to grow. We get a lot of clients come in and refer their counterparts. And so, but pretty much that's what we are. We are kind of, you think of Fireblocks as the foundation for any digital asset business. Huh. All right. So now back to the nerds. What did we do wrong? <laughs> It was really funny because when I first actually I, I saw your nerds a couple of weeks ago whenever you launched them, um, and what was funny when I saw the website again. Sorry, my dogs are on the desk here. Uh, when I saw the website again, when you sent it, was that uh, you said that you needed to pay some Ethereum to mint the nerds, right? As in the gas fee had to be paid in Ethereum, and so it's a technicality. It's really a geeky technicality, but I think it, it, it warrants uh, you know, making sure that people know the difference. So Ethereum is the blockchain name. The actual token that you use is Ether. Um, and so when you're talking about you know, paying units of Ether, a lot of it is referred to as Ethereum, but that's really the technicality and the difference between both of them. Okay, but, but beyond that, like I see what everybody else does. It There's a Discord, there's a this, there's a that, and they're, they're doing promotions, they're doing spaces. Like, is that what's the key to all this? Or is it like, what, what is the real, like you mentioned, you own crypto punks, you own this for all the traditional finance people on here, describe what the value prop of NFTs are in your mind. Um, and then I'm going to shut up and let the others get in here for questions. So get your hands up. <laughs> sure. So the current iteration of NFTs, right? What we've all seen over the last year since people, $69 million sell at Christie's uh, in March of 2021 up today with the board apes and the punks. Uh, it's only a small piece of what NFTs will be in the next decade, 
two decades, right? So culture and education are only about four or 5% of US GDP. And that's what we have tokenized so far with NFTs as they are today. What is the value proposition of this project? Um, it's a, the ability to capture the intangibles in a community and be able to monetize them, trade them, uh, borrow against them, short them. Um, and it's just like you think of a Bloomberg chat with all your friends from different banks uh, and people wanna be a part maybe of that Bloomberg chat. And now obviously multi-party chats have been uh, banned for a couple of years since you know, all the cartels and the li LIBOR rig and stuff. My former house, which shall remain nameless. Uh, uh, but imagine you had a really cool, you know, Bloomberg chat with a bunch of people and you have an image that represents your participation, your identity in that group. And then you can use that image to let others know around the internet, which is now really the internet, you know, our, our digital identity is, is bigger, pretty much in our physical one, because you know, your Facebook pictures, your Instagram pictures, your TikTok videos, you reach more people through the internet than you do in a physical way. So now you're able to say, hey, listen, I have a board ape and I'm part of this community of 10,000 board apes and this is what we're doing. And so people wanna to belong to that. And the only way to enter it is to buy a board ape. And so you're really capturing that, all that intangible value that exists within a community and, and you're giving it the ability to, to be, you know, material in a way with with the tokenization process it almost feels like a, like a digital social club right and whatever information or or uniqueness of that group that's provided to that group kind of services that and i asked this kind of in a joking manner but like money morning rolls around like what are your fundamentals like what are, what are you looking at besides for price like what else do you look at like and if you mentioned the community like what how much access do you have on who are the owners of a certain thing, right? How do you track the community? Um, like what metrics, besides for like the feel of the community and like where it may go, what metrics are you looking at? Sure, so I'm gonna take a step back and kind of like touch back on Michael's point earlier, how blockchain is a competitor for, you know, the ETF technology, right? And why is that? I saw it, so last part of my career, I was dealing structured products as well. And, you know, if you think about structured products, around the world, how many people really have an opportunity to be, to make an innovation that will impact you know, private wealth management for the rest of the world? 200 quants at the 20 big banks around the world, and that's it. And to be one of those 200 quants, you have to go to like one of the 15 schools in the US or like that one in Paris where everybody goes to, right? And that's really the population of people that can make an impact in that segment. Whereas with blockchain, right? All you need is a computer with internet and some programming skills that you can learn off YouTube or tutorials. Granted, the more education you have from institutions and stuff, probably the better off you'll be in that path. But it's open to anybody to go and launch a protocol, launch a project. If you look at DeFi, right? Ah, Aave, which is, is the, the, the largest uh, you know, borrowing and lending mark, money market protocol, a guy from Finland started, right? And so that's blockchain, really power to the people in that sense. So when you think about NFTs and those communities, same thing, you're able to kind of like find your tribe. Um, in the internet. And now, you know, we've been, well, we were quarantined for what, almost two years, right? People were desperate for connections and it's hard to really connect with others over the internet. Um, and, and while it's easy to converse with them, to really be able to share in like an ethos of a community is a little bit more difficult. But with Discord and the advent of, again, online identity tokenized as an NFT with the profile picture projects mostly, you're able to kind of like find that and um, there's intrinsic value to it. Now, how do you check it? Analytics? It really depends. It's just like, you know, stocks. Are you a quant trader or is just looking to get in and out and, you know, intraday? Are you somebody that's building a portfolio for the next 10 years? It's a very similar thing. But what I do, I buy stuff that I'm going to hold hopefully for a long, long time. Um, and there's plenty of tools for like the flippers. It's actually a tool called flips.finance. Um, there's blockchain tools like Nansen that you can use to see how many wallets own a project, what the price trajectory has been, how many people have listed their pieces. So like you know, the concentration of like diamond hands. Um, and then that's the beauty of a blockchain. The analytics are so powerful because it's all code, it's all numbers, it's all math. There's no, you know, you, you look at the, what's the guy, Archipelago, the guy that just got arrested because he was hiding positions 
in stocks through the use of derivatives and the use of like, you know, really friendly prime brokers and all this stuff. In blockchain, you can't hide. You really can't hide. Everything's out there. It's public, it's transparent. The smarter, the better your tools are, the more of an edge you have. But at the end of the day, you really can't hide. And so with NFTs, same thing, really empowers a community to, to be able to build on top of that kind of like social layer. So, so Dan, before you go, I just want to comment on two or three things from Sergio, and then we'll let you pivot to the next thing. First off, the, uh, the way that blockchain unhides things. We did a show yesterday with Wisdom Tree, and uh, Eric Irvin noted how the CEO of Overstock put his stock dividend on a, um, on a blockchain, which forced everybody to show their naked shorts that he believed were destroying his stock for years. I loved that, that story because DeFi was able to undo the mess that TradFi has done and allowed for through all the forms of derivatives. Um, number two, David asked a question about how do you value them, right? And we went through this in building this. And I will tell you that Cynthia and Tiago and I were not scientific in it, but I want to share this part that comes from the article. So um, most of these NFTs are built through layers, right? Um, the board apes obviously have quite a bit more layers than the six or seven we have in our nerds. And then what people use as a form of fundamentals, David, and just to share with the rest of the group is the rarity of the traits of those oh, layers. Yeah. So like we made well, a trait. So that's one side. The other side is the community it creates. So it's also who actually physically owns it, right? Which changes over time. And that's the other side of that. Well, so it's the desirability of the trait or a trait that... Yeah that is more rare. So for example, our lo logo is in the glasses here. That's our most rare trait. And so far, nobody has minted one. So even though these are never going to be worth anything, and I'm not encouraging anybody to go buy these, I'm telling you, these are used to teach. But theoretically, in a true NFT that's got a discord and is doing all this stuff, we are true NFTs, but one that's trying to make money, these things would have rarity traits like a baseball card or a type of sneaker. And it's programmatic in the way the NFT is put together through the, through the, the layers, the, the red lipstick, the, the red tie, the logo in the glasses. Those are the rarer traits. If you got all three of them, you'd have the rarest thing. The second utility though, is that use of these to do something else. Like if this is what you need to get into a game or like we've talked about that the next iteration of the ETF nerd, you have to have the first one to be able to mint the new one, but the new one lets you come to one of our bell ringings each year. Things like that are how the future is coming, or at least how I look at it. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let Dan get his question in, but I wanted to respond to some of that stuff. And Sergio, if I was wrong on any of that, shoot me down. <laughs> no, you're great. You're great. And, and that's, such, that's really a very valid point, right? Like, how do you value something? At the end of the day, these are markets that, you know, the intrinsic value is God knows what it is, right? Um, and so think of it like a stock that really has no earnings. Um, and then what's the market, you know, pricing it? Well, whatever the next person's willing to pay for it. Right, and so whatever you believe that's going to become, and actually the the valuation models you want to call it have changed a lot over the last year because you know rarity was a big thing, but there's also kind of like the desirability of a trade. So like hootie punks are not they're like middle trade. They're not they're you know anywhere near the rarest, but people really like them because of the people who use them as a profile picture, and so hootie punks will always 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 trade much higher than the rarity, and then the board apes came around. And then their utility is independent of the rarity, right? So the airdrops, the mutants, all the stuff that you've been getting is independent of how rare your ape is. So you've seen a uh, multiple or a valuation compression between the super rare ones and the, the floor pieces. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's more about just having the piece. And so it's still evolving and different projects take on different forms. And then obviously you get the hype cycles and the bubbles and, and so it's all combined. It's like the wild west. So Weisskopf. Yeah, I'm trying. I, I only have one question. This is going to be hard for me. Um, you can so, ask another one later. Don't worry. We, we, so we got, so, we got them. <laughs> so yeah. So so um, liquidity is always a question um, uh, that I get asked um, when I'm speaking to folks on NFTs. If there's a limited supply, you know, can they be 
what my dad used to say jiggled in terms of price. Yes, I'm sorry. I don't know if you were done with your question. No, no, no yeah, that's my course. question. You know, no, so, of so, course, of course. Yeah, yeah no, so, for sure. Like any so, security too. No, no, well, yeah, except that, except that. Bill let's Wong that, did it. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, I, I, I take your point, and, and, and you're correct, especially in the commodities area where there's been precedent for that, right? Um, so, so if, the, if, as an example, does this happen? We have a thousand nerds. We can't make money on it because, for you know, price is not um, the objective here. That was probably one of our mistakes, by the way. Um, no, no, we, we cannot make money on it. <laughs> I know we can't. No, 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 no. no, but, no but, but, but in in creating it that way, we eliminated a key um, utility value. And, 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 and you know, uh, so anyway. Like, I, I don't know, because others can make money on it. Like, it what. exists on OpenSea. Like, like here, right? I, I don't think we've eliminated it. Others can trade it, right? Others yeah. can go trade it if they want it. Right, they're all there. Others can sell to each other. Like when I know Nautic wanted a bald one, he he either had a mentally got one or he could have bought it from somebody. And well, has it gone up in value? Nobody's traded one yet. I, I've seen some put up for sale, and we don't have all these normal terms that the rest of the world uses, like floor price and stuff, because we didn't put them in there. So so okay, so let's drill Only into that. In the okay. ETF world, with the bald one go. No, yeah, like that's, that's true. <laughs> so, so, so we are not going to make money on this. So, Sergio, give us some advice how we can how we can lead to a price going higher. Well, first of all, you know, CryptoPunks, right? They're the OG, most arguably most valuable connect collection given the level where the highest uh, traded NFTs ever trade, right? So, aliens zombies all those eight punks right an ape trade for like 15 million dollars a zombie trade for 30 i mean a uh, alien for 30 million dollars um a zombie trade for three million dollars last week all those nfts were giving away for free in 2017 and the creators larva labs took zero royalties on them yet they still went to the okay, so, so nerds are. might be valuable i'm pulling yeah. this up because honestly i would say the layers of our nerds look better than this stuff <laughs> So. <laughs> so no, let him talk because he, yeah. he's gonna. He, this is very interesting. So keep going. Yeah. So what happened was, how do you get value, right? So people started saying, well, first of all, this is the first or one of the first NFT projects ever. It's generative, um, and and still today, actually, most of the holders are like Ethereum OGs, and so it became a bedling good in that if you had a punk, if you used a punk as your profile picture, um, you signal to the world that, you know, you were either early and smart for being early or rich. Um, the punk floor went up to 500K in August, for example, right? It was $10,000 February of last year. It went up to $500,000 in August. So what's that? Six months, it 50X. Uh, because there was so much demand for, 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 signaling to the world that you were a punk and they've now since come off um because obviously you get that hype cycle and you get all that money and you start chasing momentum stuff that you see in every single market so but but the punks were free and you could claim as many as you wanted um i have a couple of friends who claimed 100 each uh they spent the whole night just claiming them and they held on to most of them till till this day um and, and it's that ability again to to make the NFT or, or, or for the NFT to take a life on its own and the community on its own and be able to signal something higher. Like Board Apes were, Board Apes took like four days to mint out. They actually were very, very slow to mint out. They were 0.08E. And it wasn't until a big flipper who was like Pranksy minted 1,500 of them in one night that they sold out. But they were just any other, like there were so many projects coming out that week. Um, and, and the funny thing is, right, like the floor for board apes and the actual value you held an ape since then, if you've gotten the airdrops, you'll be looking at like $900,000 today, uh, an aggregate. You have not seen the high end of the ape market get anywhere near close to the high end of the punk market. And again, so you have different valuation models for like different valuation cycles. So this gold ape that you have here with laser eyes, is probably, you know, top 10 of the apes out there. But 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 Sergio, um, but Sergio, yeah. how do you, how do people make it go higher? I get the history of it's, some of it's these exceptions. Supply and demand, dude, and it's it's these traits that we were talking well, about. Well, dude, that, I got I I got fifty fifty thousand people following me. Okay, um, 
But they don't want in, your NFT. Well, give they them don't a want reason people. to want it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like any consumer product, right? Like why you, you see it with medicine. You go to get Tylenol and people stay up, pay, pay up for the brand versus the generic from Walgreens, even the exact same chemicals. And still people believe that maybe Tylenol has better, you know, chemicals when like that's pretty hard when you have like FDA regulations and stuff. And it was, Tylenol was still trade at a premium, right? And people want to believe that it's because it's better quality. And the same case with NFTs. If you want to sell NFT, you got to give people, first of all, you know, the, the, illusion at least of value right they, they think they're getting something that is worth their while and second and this is where board apes is really really good and that's why they flipped the, the, the punk floor is utility um as michael was saying let's say your your etf nerds um start qualifying people for bell ringings or for free conference tickets or for whatever it might be so then they become an artifact that's going to give you access to something else and and that gives them value hopefully to somebody um and and that's how it begins and then again once things start catching on you see uh, the typical hype cycle and things tend to overshoot and whatever but that's what you know just like any other consumer product you have to make it desirable Remember, crocs were going crazy like and then people started making fun of them six years later and now they're back to being uh, appealing it's it's kind of like all in the same same lines all right cynthia you're up I think good question. Why cough? I, I, I love this stuff, man. <laughs> uh, guys, just, I didn't say it at the beginning. We are closing off of, uh, of 15 minutes early because Sergio uh, was double booked and we were able to get him to sneak in here. So we're, we've got 15 more minutes. If you've got a question and put it in the chat, but I'm going to go to Cynthia right now. Yeah. I, um, I have so many things on my mind right now. I don't know where to start. So, um, uh, so first of all, things like, you know, we got to offer them at least the illusion of value. It's already like a red flag for me. Like, how is this an investment when, if we start, if an illusion is as good as the real thing? Uh, two, just this idea that, you know, anybody with a computer and a YouTube channel to go learn how to do things, maybe I'm just too ignorant, which it's all cool. And I even got Ethereum and Ether wrong, but I don't think the stuff is easy. It's uh, it's not this idea that this just opens the floodgates to everybody and anyone and everyone can access. All you need is that internet connection. I think oversimplifies it in a way that to me is a little mind boggling. Um, so I just, you know, just trying to understand, I understand that the value of it is an art, for example, um, totally get that. Uh, but just, you know, the value of a community is kind of interesting to me. Maybe it's because, you know, to me, community is I grew up on the beach and community is wherever you find hanging out on the beach when you're a kid and you play with them all day. That's it. So it feels like the value of the community aspect is some sort of bridge to metaverse, which is a whole other ball of wax that I don't even I can't even imagine having to cross that bridge. I'm still trying to figure out NFTs first. So the whole thing to me is a little um either i already lost this train and i really have to run down the track to catch up or i'm really missing something i envy your conviction i mean you told us before the call you sold all your equities and all your investments in your nfts i i cannot imagine that so i don't even know where to go with this other than what is it about nfts that i don't understand what is it about nfts that i don't know is this something that in terms of utility or, or disruption, uh, is it evolving really quickly? So, you know, those of us who are starting from behind feel like you can never catch up or, you know, hey, it's been a, a steady story. I don't even know where to go with this, Sergio, honestly. Hey, hey Sergio, <laughs> let, let me just ask her one simple question sure. uh, and then you go for it. Um, when was the last time you voted your proxy statement on shares that you own, Cynthia? me you yeah yeah I, I don't think people realize that they they don't really own a company right they own a stock and they just expect it to go higher i don't know that it's really that much different so so i i, I I'm i see, gonna, I see where you're going thing. there dan yeah that's a it's, great it's, point yeah. it's a great oh, very point. good point I, what I was going to say that my first answer was going to be, and um, it's it's hard to word it correctly. And I'm ESL, I learned English in high school, so I apologize. But it's 
generational differences. Um, right? If you think You're about- You're telling me I'm old, I guess. I'm that. old too. <laughs> we're all old, we're all old. Um, it's, it's, if you think about the internet when it came about, you know, and I was what, in middle school, it was slow, it was expensive. I was in Mexico, like it was super expensive. It would take over the home time, right? You couldn't get calls in or out. To download a song, it would take you two hours and, you know, we <laughs> prayed the connection wouldn't go down. And now you can stream songs. So it's it's too early in the technology. Blockchain has been around what, 12, 13 years. It's kind of judge it by the same way that we judge every other technology that we have. Look at stocks, right? They used to trade in fractions. Now they trade in, in fractions of stock, right? Before it used to be like eights and quarters. And now it's like, you can buy half a share. And yeah. so as technology evolves, things get better, more efficient. And, and, and you know, when you ask about the community, right? Like uh, another example I love to use is dating. If you look at the, the way people used to meet their significant others, today it's mostly via apps. And that is a fact of life. When I was at GS in like 09 and Tinder came around, people saw it as dirty. And it was like, what are you doing? And you met, pe- you, met you know, girlfriends, boyfriends through groups of friends. And 30 years ago, it was your church group. And 50 years ago, it was like somebody your grandmother introduced you to. So as we move through time and technology kind of like makes society more efficient for better or for worse, right? Things change. And so, yeah, you know, if you have internet and YouTube, that's not going to make you a a blockchain programmer, but it's certainly going to lower the barrier for entry. And and it's going to take 20 years before, you know, people like know Solidity, like they know how to program an uh, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, my first email that I sent, uh, was over, I was studying abroad and my mom sent me an email. I taught her how to, actually it was my mom's first email. I taught her how to send emails right before I left for the trip. And she would send me very, very short emails, like telegrams. And I had no idea why until one day she said, I really, really miss you. I hate that I'm running out of space in this little square. So I'm gonna send you another one. So she never realized that you could just continue typing. Right, and like I told you guys earlier, my mom is a prolific TikToker yeah. and Facebooker now. But back then, like just the whole paradigm changed for her. She couldn't see it. And, and I just say, let's give it a little more time. It's super early to your question. Are you catching up now? No, it's super, super early. It's been one year of like people getting into NFTs. There's so much to discover, to create, to build, to innovate on that. Yeah, it's a little frustrating looking at how much money some people have made because they were here three months earlier or a year earlier. But other than that, like I said, it, we've only tokenized a small, small percentage of what's available out there. And so I think folks like yourself that have such a kind of like front row seat at a gigantic industry, you once you kind of like get it, if you want to say it, you'll be able to know, OK, I need to go make this more efficient, this back office pro- process, like, like, like Mike was saying, you know, maybe we don't need to do it this way. I was with um, old head of loans at a big bank last night having dinner, and he's now working on a protocol to settle loans because loans today take 45 days to settle. Huh. And so, you know, imagine if we cut that in half or in to like five minutes. And so technology takes its time, but once it's there, it just kind of goes fast. And we're very, very super cliche, but we're so early in NFTs still. Hmm. Well, thanks. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll, I'll make sure my kids learn this stuff too, so they can teach me. Because the that the is the best thing. I, yeah. <laughs> it, it, you also hatch their future. Um, so I'm actually helping my mom, and we've been recording the videos where I teach her about blockchain and downloading wallets, um, and we're using those to help educate other people back in Mexico that might be afraid to kind of like jump in because it's it's a scary space and, and, you know, it's, it's hard and it's tough. But again, it's like the internet back in the day, there was a lot of stuff that could go wrong um, or like cars early on, right. They were like even dangerous um, and you had to crank them to start him and like all this stuff and the brakes were not good. Right. And then we had like ABS and now we have all these things where the cars are driving themselves and it's been what, nine years, something like that. So same thing. So, so um, I don't know if you were talking to Mike Cagney when you were talking about 45 days, um, but so one of the, one of the things that I do on the blockchain CEO interview series is I always ask, um, the people on the series is going, going forward, right. Five years from now, uh, looking backwards, what was the most obvious thing that people are not thinking about today that they should be thinking about in the way of NFTs or, or whatever you want to say? Yeah, no, I think there's, I don't think there's one thing. 
I think there's there's many, and I think there's so many opportunities. Again, depending on on your skill set and your knowledge base and like the access that you have to you know, different industries. I think the biggest you know 2020 hindsight will be wow, like tokenization really came into the industry, and those who were ready were able to monetize it very very nicely. Um, I think it's that it's, it's we're going into an era of hyper tokenization and a lot of things are going to get tokenized. And I think people would talk of tokens as like fungible tokens, like fungies, right? Like your Uniswap token, your USDC, your like, you know, Brazilian React on the blockchain. But really all the tokenization um, use cases will be NFTs. And today, we're, again, NFTs, pounds, art blocks, ape, but not really just NFTs. Just it's a token that is unique within the blockchain. And so once you use that framework, you can start thinking of, you know, all the use cases, coupons, tickets, real estate, loans, you know, there's a lot of things that, that can fit within that. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to go to the audience for a question, but before that, I just want to say DeFi. Thank you. <laughs> so we got about six, seven minutes left. Um, I hope I'm saying the name right. Harsh Oza. Uh, is asking what are some key things to look for in a project when deciding to buy an, 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 an NFT? It's funny because I went through this also with my, my nephew, Neil. We were kept, I was, what do we should be looking at? And he tells me, I'm in this Discord. I'm in that Discord. I'm, I, I'm looking at the management. I, I went on spaces with these people. I was, and I have still no idea what the hell I'm looking at. Um, so love to hear what you say. I'm going to pull up open see while we do it because then maybe you can okay. kind of like guide us through how people would start to look through a bunch of projects that are out there. Sure. So the first thing is I look for art that I resonate with because 99% of these things are going to zero, right? So if you're going to be stuck with something, <laughs> place might as well... <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true, right? Like it's, it's, we're in a bubble. And so it, I want to hold stuff that I, like, I, I bought stuff last year and like Nifty Gateway, like art pieces uh, that are, you know, worth, 5% of what, they, what I paid for, but I really enjoy them. And I like them. So I don't mind having those like in my gallery or we print them out, put them up at home. So art that you like. Second, if you're trying to- so, so give me an example of that. Let me put that in here on the screen for somebody. Like describe a, a, something that's like a high quality art piece of NFT that I could find on OpenSea. Right. So my favorite, one of my favorite artists uh, is Ness Graphics. So N-E-S-S, -S, Ness, double S, yeah. So this is not profile picture, this is actual digital art, right? So I like buying art. Ness is a 25 year old um, artist from Connecticut. He used to design um, concert visuals for like Diplo and uh, some rappers and Coachella. Obviously with the pandemic hit, he lost all his earnings uh, because of that. And he came to the NFT world and started designing this futuristic near link kind of things. Um, and I love it, I think it's great. Um, I went into a Discord. I started interacting with him as an artist, and and I realized like high quality person in my opinion. Somebody has a good vision, understands the dynamics of supply and demand, rewards his holders. Right, like there's some pieces um, as his values started going up. There were some pieces that you could only buy if you were a holder of a previous piece, and so the combination of that is what kept me in. So, for example, that NYSC piece. Um, right Where there in the middle. The one, one, one more. Oh, one. this one right here. The one more. Yeah, that one. Okay. The NYSE. Yeah. So that one's actually my desk from Barclays. He uh, he used it as an inspiration <laughs> when I left, and I really appreciate him doing that. Um, and if you look, he will scribble the names of his collectors into the scenes, and so you have to really like zoom in and stuff. But you'll find the names of his collectors. So that's stuff that to me it's awesome like you know my name is under that desk that's my desk from Barclays um and and he's done stuff like that for other pieces where like some of his other collectors will have like their you know their nft on it um so you know community in that sense quality of the project sponsor or in this case artist um appeal i mean to me that looks awesome like it's just beautiful um i, I then, love this little yeah. fiat is dead hidden in here <laughs> yeah, no, he, loves, he loves Easter eggs. There's like so many Easter eggs in them. Um, so for like an art piece or something like that, and, and, and he's done very, very well. He sold a piece for $250,000 on Sotheby's last fall. He sold it to a wow. DAO that was formed just to buy it. Um, 
of Sotheby's. And so again, this is art. This is not you know, the typical profile picture project that everybody's trying to ape into and like a hundred exit in a week. This is the stuff that I like. If you want to talk profile pictures, um, I would still recommend similar approaches where you know, a profile picture that you like, that you're going to put up on your Twitter, that you're going to put in your Slack. Like Mike Punk is on every single Fireblocks contract that I've signed for clients. Um, and it has my punk in there instead of like my picture. And so I love that. Like it's become me, my, my, my digital identity. Um, obviously punks, apes, all those projects are pretty high now. Like it's not really entry level. Uh, the floor for a punk is like 160K. The floor for an ape is over $300,000. Um, hmm. but, but it's the same. When I came into the punks, they were not you know, that expensive. And so I went into the Discord. I chatted with the people. I, I, we kind of had had the same values in that what we thought of blockchain, what we wanted. Um, people loved the apes because they were, you know, more like hype and kind of like, you know, streetwear stuff. Um, so find that community, find your tribe, um, find the NFT project for it. Make sure, you know, a lot of them have big plans. Make sure that those are realistic. Like, you know, they're not going to build a metaverse in three months. They're not going to build a game that you're going to want to play in three months. So, you know, but if it's like real life events and, and, and people, again, are looking to belong, they're looking to be part of something bigger, that's just a part of being a human being for the most part. And so, yeah, art you like, money that you can spend and not worry about, right? That's another big thing. These things move 50, 60% a week. So, you know, if you put yourself in a tight spot because you spend more money uh, that you can lose, that, that the one you can lose, you're obviously going to sell the bottom and you're going to hate yourself. Um, so money that you can, that you can spend in that, that can go to zero. And then just check out the project, the discord, the Twitter, talk to other collectors, see what they're excited about, you know, why they bought it. And, and, you know, it's not much different than again, valuing like a hype stock, right? Like all, all these stocks that had no earnings, but their clients were all about it, right? Like how many, how many stocks people buy because, you know, they love getting on their Peloton or they love, you know what GameStop GameStop but no again but back then back then right no but like I saw it with Berkshire Hathaway when I was in college I went to to the annual convention and you know Warren and Charlie will sit up there for 12 hours and people would just sit there and ask them questions and everybody was so proud walking around Omaha with their badges and it's like a annual thing where people are just just like amazing and I met you know a lot of people I went twice and I will never forget in my life and so when I come to NFTs and I see that this is similar, but for people with like, you know, you know, $500 profile picture instead of, you know, a hundred thousand dollars stock, uh, which was at the time, I don't even know where it is now. Uh, doesn't change the fundamentals. It's the same thing. It's human nature wanting to belong and saying, Hey, we're all in this together. Let's go. Um, it's 0.25 so apes right now, by the way. 0. 0.25 apes. <laughs> That's the price. Just, you know. Well, it's funny. Years and years and years ago, <laughs> Disney stock was like that owning a Disney stock, one share, got you all kinds of like special benefits. So it's, it's none of this is new stuff. It's just Correct. now on a blockchain. Right. Um, all right. So we've come to the, to call it, we got maybe two or three minutes left. Um, I do want to thank you for coming on and talking to us and introducing Fireblocks and being our NFT specialist. Um, we're going to get one more question in here, but I want you to answer it with your, your metaverse um, NFT face. Uh, okay so let me let me uh let me yeah, switch out. over i think dan do you have the last question you still got the hand up so i'll, I'll get you the last one in uh, he might be muted we gotta get no no we gotta get oh, a picture of him when when he's like that though because yeah. it's kind of like freaking i funny, gotta choose it? my yeah you can go. leave the bar to put it on there he is there we go oh <laughs> man who's gonna, who's right, gonna do this who's gonna do this snippet on, on the head. I got it. I like got so, it. So, this is a me bit. So this is a cool. me bit. I love them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that this is a question so much as it's a statement. I get it with art, you know, meaning that, um, listen, you know, my mom, God bless her, she's she loves English furniture. Um, she has it in her living room. She enjoys it. It's been, it's probably 20% of what it was 15 years ago or 20 years ago. I don't know that it's any different. And the fact that it's less, you know, worth less doesn't change how she feels about it, right? This is the same thing. I wish we had focused a little bit more on the utility aspect 
of of NFTs in general. You mentioned concert tickets. You know, in, in that we got to get you back to to have a real discussion mm -hmm. on how NFTs will change industries, right? Enable to do David's, you know, um, field, the gig economy to really expand. So uh, I hope you'll agree to like come back on, mm -hmm. on our show and like have a, a, a discussion around utility value. And I, it's very difficult for me to like, look at you with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, do, why, do we, why don't we close it out, Sergio? Just tell us the thing you're most excited about here and then we'll let you free to go uh, off with the family. Awesome. Well, first of all, again, thank you so much for the invite and, and thank you again for the invite to come for the second part. I'm always, always open to, uh, you know, helping people wrap their hands around this crazy world because it's total nonsense, right? It makes absolutely no sense when you're looking at it from the outside. But once you're inside and you start, you know, kind of like nodding your head when you hear Sergio talk with like a stupid media face on and, uh, and you're like, hey, wait a minute, maybe that, that, you know, that sounds like a Disney stock or like the Berkshire Hathaway or like, you know, how technology changed as we went through the time. Um, so I'm happy to, to, to be here and to come back. I'm most excited about real world utility. So, you know, we'll definitely have to do another session. Um, I think there's, it's too, still kind of like early when it comes to, to that. We've seen some, you know, board apes, they had their ape fest um, and everybody came to New York during NFT NYC in November. That's happening again next month. Uh, they moved it to the summer, uh, thankfully, because it was really cold last year. Um, and so people will show up to events with their NFTs and say, okay, well, I'm here now. Let's, let's meet other people. Um, and then, you know, airline tickets, imagine being able to like trade those. There's a couple of projects in South America already working on that with airlines. Um, one thing we didn't talk on, but it's royalties, right? Uh, NFTs at the end of the day are smart contracts. And so you can embed in them secondary market royalties into perpetuity. So of course your project, if you make it, you know, what, it becomes valuable. Every time there's a sale in the secondary market, you collect part of that fee. For artists, it's a game changer, but also for project sponsors. Um, there's projects like Moonbirds that was released by Kevin Rose and his team at Proof Collective, where people saw buying the NFT more like a seed investment, like a venture capital investment into whatever business they're going to build. Um, there is stuff like Rafik Anadol, who is a great, great artist, an AI artist, he paints with data. Uh, he's building, you know, he's actually putting up, um, that's going to be a large screen outside of Christie's on Friday. Anybody that's in New York should come by and visit on 30 Rock, where, you know, the, NF the, the utility of that NFT will be that, that you see it, right, in the big auction houses, but yet you can also have it in your computer or in your Apple Watch or whatever. So utility is going to be the name of the game. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to come back whenever you guys want and, and build up on that for sure. Wonderful. Um, we want to thank you. We don't want to keep you any longer. And I want to thank the audience for being here with us. We'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. See you later. Thank you.